New Yorkers. And we're going to be late tonight. Yep, there we go. This was what I was supposed to be doing earlier today. <laughs> Recording, great, awesome. Okay, thank you. Now let's get back to this presentation. Okay, so all that to say that um, I'm in alignment here with my opportunity to uh, really get in touch with my feelings through my music, which I have not been able to do in all this time. Like I've said before, usually my music is about teaching or, you know, uh, historical events, but, or, you know, just life experiences like Saturn's Return or Fucked Up System or World Peace. But as far as emotions as about my family, um, things that are going on in the world, I have not really tapped into my feelings. So I'm going to be taking our advantage of this celestial alignment, and I encourage you to do the same. With your writing, poetry, dancing, uh, Facebook posts, I've also made the determination to stop sharing other people's content and um, come up with my own writing more. So I encourage everyone who's on the healing path to do the same. All right. So here is a um, example or. This is an image of the 42 laws of Ma'at at the temple. And there's lots of uh, representations of the laws of Ma'at in English. You know, the practice is you, they're also called 42 negative confessions. And the practice is that you, in the morning, you say, I will not do such things. And in the evening, you say, I have not. So this one is obviously um, a different version where it's strictly in the present. But the traditional one, oops, I don't have one here, is um, I have not or I will not. And so now I want to switch over to some websites. Um, yeah. Um, so I've already talked about the mysteries of Ma'at philosophy from the Pert and Haru, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And this is the annual Winter Solstice Retreat and Goddess Festival. This is the first year that it will be held in Florida, at least as long as I've been going. Um, so far, they've always been in Atlanta. So I'm excited about attending this event. And here is the website, um, 365, know thyself 365.com. And this is the first source that I have found that has the, the uh, 42 affirmations of Ma'at in both the English and the Medimetra. And so here they are here. And so, um, one of my yoga teachers, Sivaja, had asked me to write a song uh, for the laws of Ma'at. And after she wanted it in English, or the Medinetra, she said the Medinetra, I asked Dr. Ashby to present me with the teachings, and he was really busy and didn't get a chance to. So I've been waiting for like four years for um, this opportunity. And this year, one of my uh, students and sisters, uh, presented me with a poster and someone else had given me one. So I actually have two posters with the affirmations. And so even though like different organizations have their own version, for instance, when I asked Dr. Ashby about it, he said he would use M, E, M instead of E, N. And, and I waited, I waited a long time for him to, um, you know, help me out, but he didn't. So finally he told me to trust my my guidance and just go ahead and sing the song the way it is. So um, that's what I'm getting ready to do. So this website is really awesome. You can buy the web, the, um, you can buy the poster from here. 
They also have a free hieroglyphic class. Look at all these uh, resources here if you're interested in Kimit. I haven't checked out their calendar. I don't expect it will be the same one that I'm using, but I should check it out. But then here you have, they have a whole system for pressure for homeschooling with uh, flashcards and coloring books and um, there's a demo coloring and it's for all ages. It's not just for children. I don't know what the demo is. But anyway, you can learn the hieroglyphs and um, oh, I'm lost here. So here on the 42 Laws of Ma'at page, they have this really cool feature where you can, um, for each, each section, you can blow it up and study the glyphs. You can study the metanetter and the English. So the song I'm going to sing is just the metanetter. That's not the right page. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just getting used to this page myself. Here is affirmation. This is the page where you can um, blow them up. I don't mean blow them up, but you can enlarge them. <laughs> so, so here's for example. Here it says I have not. So at the end of the day, you would say I have not slaughtered the divine cattle, and in the morning you say I will not slaughter. So that is the spiritual practice in itself. I think this only allows you to enlarge the first seven. Um, and then here's the demo page with the video to transform the glyphs. You know, I guess they have like another video. I guess it's three videos. And then there's flashcards that you can download and color, which I am definitely going to do. And they make all these claims. Um, what you'll learn to do, you can start for $1 for a seven-day trial. I don't know what the rest of it is. But anyway, that's a great source resource for someone who wants to get more into the teachings of Ma'at. So as promised, I'm going to present the song. And... Um, I've been practicing every day, getting ready for the retreat. I don't have the words memorized. <laughs> but earlier today and yesterday on the devotional worship program, I was singing the chorus. So if you want to sing along with the chorus, oh, wait, let me make sure the camera is visible. I don't think I. I don't know the camera is. Okay. Okay, cool. Man, I'm having a tough time today. Okay, well, it says that you can see the camera on the desktop, so that's putting the lyrics in front of the page on the computer. Okay, so the chorus is, So dua means adoration to the goddess and also to everyone because the, the gods and goddesses are within all of us. And it's also a way of saying thank you. And then we say nukpu, nukpu ma'at, that means I am ma'at. That means I, I have the um, cosmic force of ma'at within me. I've never sung a song like this before. The way I sing the song, I've never, excuse me, I've never, um, in Seman, Iak, Mirtari, in the Kim, in Tenef, Nekin, in Seswa, in Nekanuta, in the Kin, Akinetaku, in Tadish, Fauti, Nekaru. In 
I'm excited to hear more. All right, so now I'm going to recite the translation, the 42 laws in English. And let me see if I can um, go back to the laws. You can see the hieroglyphs. That's a nice poster. Okay, there's a 42 affirmations. They're also called the 42 negative confessions. Number one, I have not slaughtered the divine cattle. Number two, I have not carried off the food of the children. Variant, I have not treated with contempt the netaru of the city. Three, I have not carried away offerings from the coup. Four, I have not stolen the offerings to the netaru. Five, I have not acted with arrogance. Six, I have not cursed the netaru. Seven, I have not made arrogant my voice. Eight, I have not polluted the water. Nine, I have not made curses of the king. Ten, I have not harmed, nor have I done evil. Eleven, I have not multiplied my voice or my words. Twelve, I have not polluted the air. Thirteen, I have not judged tastefully. <laughs> Fourteen, I have not stirred up strife. 15. I am not a person of violence. 16. I have not caused grief. 17. I have not made myself deaf to words of truth. 18. I have not inflamed myself with rage. 19. I have not offended anyone. 20. I have not caused terror. 21. I have not polluted myself. 22. 
I have not slept with the wife of a man. 23. I have not slept. I have not slept with the husband of a woman. 24. I have not been angry without just cause. 25. I have not set my mouth in motion against anybody. 26. I have not been an eavesdropper. 27. I have not desolated the plowed land. 28. I have not acted deceitfully. 29. I have not transgressed. 30. I have not eaten my heart. 31. I have not made anyone to weep. 32. I have not committed adultery. 33. I have not cursed. 34. I have not carried away food. 35. I have not told lies. 36. I have not despoiled the things that belong of Netter. 37. I have not diminished my obligations. 38. I have not defrauded the offering. 39. I have not slain anybody. 40. I have not robbed. 41. I have not despoiled. And 42. I have not done wrong. So that brings me to um, the teaching. But before, uh, well, before I do that, I also want to point out um, that I have two web pages about Ma'at in addition to this, um, these webinars. So if you ever want this information, there's, you just look up the chia.com Ma'at. I have the Hall of Ma'at page and the Feather of Ma'at page. One is about healing and one is about the teaching. Um, but for now, we're going to switch over to a few books written by Dr. Mwada Ashby, my teacher. And um, so now we're going to transition into the listening of listening to the teaching. And as I said uh, in, in the ad, when we live with Ma'at, that is self-care because we are living in alignment with our higher self. And when we put ourselves first and we put our healing first and we're able to stand in our truth, that's taking care of ourselves. Living with Ma'at is the most crucial self-care step we can take because, like I, my example I was sharing earlier, as a musician, as an artist and a healer, I have not tapped into my biggest pain or sorrows or grief yet. I've just been skimming near the surface. And... Um, and as my sister friend pointed out to me, I have not been true to myself because I've been afraid of how my truth would affect others. And one thing I've learned is I am not responsible for how others react when I express my truth. If I'm expressing my truth and I'm in alignment with my aunt and I'm peaceful and calm and I'm not intentionally setting out to hurt anyone, then I have every right. I have the duty. I have an obligation to express my truth and to allow, um, you know, to allow someone else or to be afraid for their embarrassment, that is not my art. So um, I wanted to share the readings from the, um, the devotional service on Sunday. Here's some images of my art. Of course, there's the wing goddess. Here she is sitting with her eyes closed with the ankh symbol resting on her knees. That's when we're in meditation and we're reflecting on our life. So even the aunt has to reflect on her own self, right? Then we have the, you know, Ma'at is symbolized by this ostrich feather and she's holding, holding a, um, a staff. She's holding a, a papyrus reed scepter. Ma'at is the philosophy, a spiritual symbol, as well as cosmic energy or force which pervades the entire universe. She is the symbolic embodiment of world order, justice, righteousness, correctness, harmony, and peace. I really like that term correctness because, you know, when we're dealing with healing with relationships, you know, it's not, we don't have to be right all the time. However, I learned this week that it's important to be correct with my words, and when I'm expressing my emotions. So I'm not trying to be right, like that person is wrong and I'm right or my way is the best. But I want to be correct when I'm expressing my higher self. And then she's known for the feather, you know, when you, um, 
when your body dies, your heart is weighed against the feather of my eye. And if your heart is heavy with resentment or regret or sadness or bitterness or revenge, then your heart will be heavy and you'll have to go to hell or, you know, go to hell or uh, be, you have to come back to earth and reincarnate it to have more experiences so that you could evolve. The goal is to get through all of your karma and all of your negative thoughts and emotions and energy blocks in this lifetime so that when your body dies, your heart will be as light as a feather. And then you've possibly seen this spelling of ma'at, ma'ati, when it's ma'ati, M-A-A-T-I, that represents the dual goddesses of truth of above and below heaven and earth. And that is, of course, Akset and Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so this is the part I wanted to read. In honor of the circuit that's going on today, which they call an election. In ancient Kemet, the judges and all those connected with the judicial system were initiated into the teachings of Ma'at. Thus, those who would discharge the laws and regulations of society were well trained in ethical and spiritual values of life, fairness, justice, and responsibility to serve society in order to promote harmony in society and the possibility for spiritual development in an atmosphere of freedom and peace. For only when there is justice and fairness in society can there be an abiding harmony and peace. Harmony and peace are necessary for the pursuance of true happiness and inner fulfillment in life. It's kind of hard to imagine living in a society where everyone, everything is founded on ma'at. Where every leader, teacher, priest, priestess, parent, educator, craftsman, salesman, everyone, every child is versed in the teachings of Ma'at, if everyone is reciting those principles or those affirmations twice a day, we would not be in the state that we're in right now. Just going back to that list, I don't think that Trump or Hillary could get through even five of these. I don't think they could even honestly say one that they haven't done. And that is a sh- that is a sh- shame. That's a shame. And so that is why the world is in the, the way that it is. It's out of balance and it's out of alignment with Ma'at. And so it's up to each one of us to embrace these principles and these teachings and these practices. Oh, excuse me. I'm burning a, an essential oil that is not agreeing with me, so I'm going to uh, put it out because this really calls me pop. It's interesting, it's the one associated with Mars. And it's really making me cough. All right. So anyway, so it's really up to us. So like if we could just start by going through these on a regular basis, because they're really about a relationship with yourself. Like think of what's going on in Standing Rock. I have not polluted the water or I have not polluted myself. How many people are polluting themselves right now? It's dinner time. They're literally poisoning themselves. Or I have not polluted the air. That could, that could go two ways. That could mean people who are constantly spewing out negative thoughts or negative words. And then our, our, our main method of transportation. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, the ones that I really had the most trouble with were the ones about um, um, getting depressed and, you know, getting down on myself. I really had to focus on those until I, I wasn't doing it anymore. So even though you may have, you may be doing fine with like 28 of them or 30 of them or even 40 of them, work with the ones that, are challenging for you or make you feel a certain way and see how you can bring about Ma'at in your life. Because if everybody could bring about Ma'at in their individual life, then eventually it would be planet, planetary. And that is the goal, is to restore Ma'at to the earth. All right. Let's return to the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, not that one. There you go. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to jump to this book called The Wisdom of Ma'ati, Introduction to Ma'at Philosophy. And um, I'm on this 100 Days of Consistency. <clears throat> and, and, you know, before I started doing this 100 Days of Consistency, because that includes consistent study, my study would be kind of random. I would just open a book to a page and read a page and then reflect on that. So I just opened the book up to this page, and I thought this would be a good uh, place for us to start. Our, have our study for today. Um, this is on page 75 of the Wisdom of Ma'ati ebook. So this page is called, this section is called a synopsis of Ma'at philosophy based on Kemetic text. Living life in contradiction with truth leads to pain and suffering as well as spiritual ignorance. This is called an Ma'at or unrighteousness. Ma'at is righteousness and if there's an N or a N in front of a word, it means not or unrighteousness. For example, in the four great truths of Shatana Chur, we have the second truth is An Ma'at, we saw you said they come in, which means lack of righteousness leads to fetters in the personality. And these fetters lead to ignorance of the divine. So when we're living in um, unrighteousness, we will be ignorant of the divine. So here you can look at the hieroglyphs. I am, I'm going to have to take that class on the Medinetra because that's not one of my strong points. In fact, I don't. I just have a few glyphs that I'm familiar with. The path of Ma'at, right action is the answer. Now the glypher... Uh, Right action is an I, and it's spelled A-R-I, which means action to do something, to get things done. And so Ari Ma'at or Arit Ma'at means to work rightly, to lead a life of integrity in accordance with Ma'atian principles. Oops, having some trouble with this wheel. There we go. Okay. And so that's interesting to me because my, um, I, I, um, I received a comedic name, and my, my comedic name is Arit Neta Es Medi Ma'ati. And it basically means one who makes offerings to the netters with music and songs. That's my action, it's my music, and uh, is beloved by the netters. So I make offerings to the Netaru with my music. Okay, then the next one is Ari Imhotep, to work contentedly with peace and contentment without egoistic desire or expectation. That's kind of tough, you know, with um, no attachment, no attachment to the outcome. To just, to just perform the actions because it's the right thing to do or um, because it will bring about peace and not because of what you will get <sighs> in return. So that's a good one. And then here we have Arit Haru, to receive the eye of Haru, perfected action, the Eucharist, the act of becoming one with divine, the highest action one can take. So Oh, looks like I missed a few here. Yeah, I'm really having trouble with this wheel. Okay, let's go back. Here's one, Ma'at Ab, purity of heart. Ab, A-B is heart. Makaru, become true of speech, spiritually enlightened, which means that um, you, you're so in tune with the universe, with the divine, that you can trust everything that comes, comes from you, everything that emanates from you, no doubt. If that's what came for you, that is, that's what it is. And um, that takes a lot of practice and discipline, too. Okay. 
Okay, so um, how would that help in self-care? Well, if there's any imbalance in your life, then what you do is you, um, you, if balance is caused by, say, imbalance is caused by, say, negative thinking or negative habits, then you change them because they're unrighteous. If it's hurting you or if it's hurting someone or if you're not taking action, you know, that's, that's unrighteous also because um, someone who just stands by and watches uh, a violation or an abuse and doesn't say or do anything is just as guilty as the one committing the the, uh, the, uh, the uh, unrighteous act. So it, I guess it's like knowing when to act and when not to act <laughs> because sometimes um, you don't want to lash out from a place of emotion or take action in a state of desperation. So you want to take action when you're in a balance, state of balance. So that is when the path of, of right action is the answer because first you have to get in balance to make sure you're taking a balanced act. I used to just take actions based on emotion because, you know, that's what the person is doing is unrighteous. It's not right. And I really had to change my ways and... And uh, I'm still working on it. Um, not take actions out of desperation. So um, by learning more about these teachings and the principles, you can see how it could have a positive effect on your 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 health and your self care. Um, purity of heart. That's what I'm working on right now. And also Ari Imhotep, these two right now are the ones I'm going to be focusing on because as an artist, sometimes I'm having blocks because I'm not getting the results that I want for the work that I'm doing, knowing that I'm not doing the work for commercial gain, yet sometimes I still want to see, um, I want to see signs that it's being effective. And the only um, the only um, way to measure success that I'm familiar with really is commercially. So this one hit me pretty hard. To work contentedly with peace and contentment without egoistic desire or expectation. I read in Hatep. And then Ma'at Ab, purity of heart. Like I said, I was triggered today and it took me two hours to calm down. Now, I can't be down on myself because it took me two hours to calm down. I got to give myself a pat on the back because it only took me two hours to come back to balance. Because in the past, I might have been shaken out of balance for several days and just been depressed for a couple of weeks, not, not knowing how it happened or where it came from or anything. But I've been learning a lot about energy techniques, and of the sound healing to help remove any heaviness in my heart. So, um, so that's another example of how you can use the teachings for your self care. Let's see, I'm kind of like like flipping um, uh, the wheel of fortune to see where I'm gonna land. Oh, what's this? Looks like a poem. Now this looks like more about politics. <laughs> I'll read that one. Let's see. Let me write back to the same thing. Okay, oh, this is a good one. Ma'at and the serpent power. The serpent power is the power that most of us are familiar with um, as the Kundalini force or the Sekhem, um, it's the energy that travels up and down our spinal cord, and it's symbolized by the caduceus, which is the, um, it's a, it's the medical symbol, it's a, it's a symbol for the medical industry. Let's see if I can find one really quickly. 
but it re actually represents the goddess Ma'at, I mean the goddess Aset and Nebethet or Ma'ati. Oh, this is going to do DNA helix. I'll just get to this. <clears throat> And so the energy that's moving up and down our spinal column is known as the uh, Sekhem or the Arat Shechem or the Kundalini. So if you ever see this symbol here um, with the double snakes and the wings of Ma'at, that is what this represents. It represents going up the spinal column, the seven chakras up to the crown chakra. So the Ma'at philosophy is intimately related to the teaching of the Arat Shechem, the serpent power. The Arat Shechem is a dormant life force which every human being possesses. It activates in accordance with a person's level of virtue. That is, the more virtuous the person, the more the life force awakens. And as it awakens, it leads a human being to the height of spiritual enlightenment. This process happens automatically. So it is important to lead a life of virtue, which leads to ma'at ab, or purity of heart. The following images come from papyrus is known as Pertimaru, or the Book of Enlightenment. Okay, so let's just take a look at a few of these, and then we'll move on to the show. And I'm going to use this button. Where are these images? Oh, here we go. Oh, good. This is the one. So here's a really good image. It has the dual goddesses, Ma'ati. There's the two feathers. This is from the ancient Egyptian papyrus of the green field. And this one shows the rings um, along the serpentine path of the life force or the chakras as it moves through the sephic bara, the seven life force energy centers or spiritual Cycle spiritual consciousness centers. Uh, they've also been called as Aritu, like Arit. So those are the Kemetic terms for chakras. And then uh, here's some, another image from the papyrus Kenna, the Lady Museum, displaying the spheres, again showing the serpentine path of the life force energy from the spirit. So um, here, the, the Amit, the crocodile. Uh, cosmic force that destroys, that eats the heart of the unrighteous. If you can check it out, he's, I mean, it's a goddess. She is biting the um, Sephic Bara right at the center chakra, between the third chakra and the fourth chakra. So she's delineating the lower three vibrational chakras from the higher ones. And then on the, on the uh, right side, we have the baboon representing Jehuti, wisdom. And here is the vessel containing the heart. And over here is the um, feather. Well, we have ma'at here on the other side. So um, there's lots of ways that we can use the teachings for our self-care, but mainly just to stay close to the goddess ma'at and to... Um, you know, follow the laws and the guidelines, the virtues, and the principles of Ma'at. Here's some more illustrations showing the, the um, Arat Sekhem or the Sefek Bara, the spiral, the dual spirals representing the two goddesses of heaven and earth. Oops, again. And then here's just more illustrations of um, the Jed Pillar of Asar showing the four upper chakras. And then here's an Indian uh, uh, illustration of the seven chakras as well. So the, um, the seven chakras are also known as the seven souls of Ra and the seven arms of the balance of Ma'at. Okay. Well, I think that will do for us today. We got a little information. Oh, here's some more illustrations of the caduceus, the chakras, the spirals, the snake. Everything you can see to show you how um, how to use this energy with the seven principles of Ma'at, the seven chakras, how it's all connected. 
just more illustrations. So. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, one more paragraph. <clears throat> the illumination of the mind with the truth of my eyes. The human mind perceives everything according to the pairs of opposites and therefore sees itself as a subject in a world of other subjects and objects. When the mind is transcended, the duality of the mind which leads to the triad of perception is also transcended. Think about it. You cannot think of differences here, there, up, down, etc. if you go beyond your thoughts. In other words, the duality is only in this realm. Once you leave this physical realm, there's no duality. Even if you are not an adept meditator who can stop the thoughts of the mind for long periods, you should be able to concentrate the mind for a few seconds. The awareness of the world ceases during that time. This is basically what happens whenever you really concentrate on something. Reflect on those moments where you are trying to remember something intensely. What was your experience in that moment? In this moment, there are no thoughts or awareness of the world. This is similar to what occurs in the dreamless sleep state. The difference is that when, the dreamless, when in the dreamless sleep state, you are not aware of it. When the transcendental experience occurs, there is once again the experience of the oneness of existence. The illusion of the mind is dissolved back into the primordial or ocean of infinite being from which the creation arose. This is the conscious perception of a liberated sage endowed with enlightenment. The enlightened sage perceives himself, him or herself, as that primordial God who arose out of the primeval waters with the original thought and the entire creation is that same primeval ocean which only appear to change into the multiplicity of the various objects of creation, but never did truly did undergo an irreversible transformation. All of that again. In this manner, the discipline of Ma'at, or the practice of living according to what is real and true, leads to the conscious perception of that which is real and true. So I think what that means to me is that if you focus on an illusion, you will perceive an illusion. And if you focus on reality, you will, you will experience reality. Someone asked me the other day about the levels of consciousness. There's unconscious people and there's conscious people. And he asked about subconscious people. And I started thinking about how most of the people that I know are subconscious. They're right at the, the threshold of consciousness. But they're allowing their earthly attachment to hold them back from making a full commitment to um, liberation and enlightenment and I think there's a lot of people that know the truth and know about enlightenment they've experienced enlightenment but they would prefer to stay in the illusion like in the movie The Matrix that guy he had had enough of the truth and he preferred the illusion and was prepared to destroy everything just so that he could stay in the illusion so if anything, once we are in line with Ma'at, we cannot, ex we can no longer accept the illusion. And I, I, going over this now, I can see how that's causing problems in my family because I no longer accept the illusion and they are all willing to go along with the lie because it's um, convenient. So that's my commentary on that. Now we're going to transition over to the um, chemotones portion of the program with the sound healing. So I'm moving my computer over to the other side of the room.
So for Ma'at, when I'm working with Ma'at, I'm usually only working, I mean, I'm primarily working with the throat and the heart chakra. So yeah, so we're going to move into the Kim Tones uh, segment. And like I said, we're going to be focusing on the um, throat, the heart, and the first eye. I don't even have like a plan or anything prepared. Because, um, man, I'm going to have to remember not to use that essential oil in the atomizer again because I'm still, still feeling the effects. Yeah, so this healing session is just based on what's going on with me today. So it's a real self-care. This is not planned or anything. It's just um, what I need to work on. <laughs> so when I do these self-care sessions, you know, I'm working on healing myself, my family, everyone on the call, everyone listening to the replay, my neighborhood, my community, my nation, and the entire planet. And, of course, everybody who's, um, gonna, whose lives are going to be affected by whatever is going on today in the, um, the circus or the media. I'm sure when we get off of this call that there will be plenty of information for us to um, absorb. So right now the world is in need of Ma'at. So these are the uh, tuning forks. Uh, I think you took off the camera because it was distracting. Oh, yeah. Anyway, here's the tuning fork. So we're going to start with the own fork. And those of you who have your tuning fork, you you know, can tune up with me. Um, there where you're at. So we start with the own forks on the feet. I usually try to show them, but I'm not going to do that today. So I'm mostly going to be working on the heart. You put one at the ball of your foot and one on the ankle. All right, I'll show and then the other foot, one on the ball of the foot and one on the ankle for grounding. Connecting to the earth, to um, the root chakra, connecting to the earth. Right. So I'm going to do my um, creativity chakra, you know, because that's where our purpose and our uh, cosmic blueprint, our DNA, is scored here, so here on this uh, kidney point. And of course, you know, being a mom and dealing with issues with my, my daughters and my family, this area is of importance for me too. Whenever there's a, a trauma or emotional trauma, physical trauma, sexual assault, it causes a block in our chakras, and that can influence, it definitely does influence our flow of energy, our flow of finances, creativity, health, wellness, mobility, all kinds of things are affected by these blocks. And as my friend pointed out, by me not giving my, myself the space to express my emotions is what caused the block for me. I've been dealing a lot with violations, but I kind of overlooked this whole issue with my family. Okay, so I'm going to um, start my healing session today with Anpu and Nebit Hat. If you're familiar with the teachings or the, the myths or legends, or maybe you're not, um, Athar and Aset um, were a couple, and Set and Nebuchadnezzar were a couple. And Set, Aset and Nebuchadnezzar are twin sisters, and Athar and Set are brothers. I mean, they're all brothers and sisters, but that was the arrangement. And at some point, Nebuchadnezzar decided that she wanted to be with Athar. She did not want to have a child by her husband. So one night when Athar was... Um, drunk after having traveled all around the world working, he uh, was intoxicated and 
she was able to uh, seduce him, trick him, he thought it was his wife, Aset. And so the, the cosmic force on Pooh was created out of that union. So Nebethet is the lady of the house who keeps things in order. She maintains the order of Ma'at. And Anpu is our sense of discernment. Anpu is the one that opens the way for us and removes obstacles to our success. And I can hear Rhonda singing the song. So um, I'll, I'll sing it really briefly because it's such a powerful song and it'll help me with some blocks. Oh, oh I've got my drum. My drum. We learn their myths so that we can make their ways our ways and, you know, um, you know, um, model our personality and character after some of them. <laughs> Thank you. And so while I was thinking the song, I was thinking about what's going on with my family, I realized that I have really good role models on how to get through this because I think of how difficult that must have been for Aset when she realized what her sister had done and then when her sister abandoned the baby on food, she didn't want her husband set to find out, right? She forgave her sister and she raised on food as if it was her own son. And then of course Set found out anyway and then he murdered the star and you know, it's a long story. But anyway, the compassion of Aset and the humility of Anpu to, um, you know, be able to fulfill his purpose without letting his emotions detract him, distract him. So, um, you know, that's something for me to work on. Anyway, um, I'm going to work on my heart chakra and my throat chakra mostly in this uh, session. So I've got Anpu and Nebit Het. Help me um, remove blocks and obstacles to feeling my joy, removing anything that's blocking me from experiencing my abiding happiness, which is my birthright. You know, and, and, um, any experiences of the past that I'm lingering onto, that's like I'm pressing the grief point right here, the lung point, end point. Anything that's still causing me sadness or causing me to feel a certain way. I'm letting that go. And then also in my throat chakra, um, removing any blocks I have to expressing my emotions, telling my story, not out of resentment or revenge or spite, but just healing. Uh, it can't it can't stay inside of me until my deathbed. That's not going to serve me. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I need to have to keep it inside until I get breast cancer or something. I mean, that's usually how these things start. You just never say anything. So I'm just going to also 
my first eye so that I'm able to project my vision of healing and wellness into the universe with no box. Now I'm connecting the three chakras, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, and the first eye to eliminate any blocks from truly feeling my emotions. You know, yesterday I sat down at the piano because I'm on this 100 days of completion sheet, and I could not find my feelings. I, I didn't feel anything. I was like, well, uh, I, I was frozen. It took me like 25 minutes to think of something to, to sing or write about, to, to express. Because I just don't go there. That stuff is really painful. And um, it's not physical pain. It's just emotional pain. And when a trigger comes up, it wastes, wasted two hours of my day. I wasn't, I wasn't fully prepared for this experience because I was distracted. All right, so then... Um, and then we also had what well, we had we had Jehuti and Ra in the sign of Ma'at. So let's let's work with that right now. We have um, Jehuti and Ra and Ra, Mercury and the Sun. So again, my heart chakra to um, illuminate any hidden feelings or emotions that are, you know, really locked away and allow them to come forth. For healing and um, you know to wash wash away my sadness, to protect my heart, um, open my heart, but also protect it from triggers, from like text messages from people that don't mean anything. But I was really triggered, you know, because they're not walking in my moccasins. They don't know how it'll affect me, so I can't like be mad at them. But also my throat chakra. I do want to be able to express my feelings, you know, and just say, oh, no, it's okay. I mean, how are you doing? Just say, oh, I'm fine. No, I want to be able to express myself when it's the right time or when it will help the situation, when it will uncover a block in a relationship, you know, with someone, or if it will help illuminate the reality. So now I'm also, um, you know, my first eye so that I can project this manifestation into resistance because this is what I want. I want to be able to express my feelings. I want to be in touch with my feelings. And I want to I want the um, expression of my feelings to bring balance. Uh, for those of you that study the uh, Muruga teachings, Muruga is a cosmic force of the inner warrior, the spiritual warrior from India, from the Tamil people, the black people of India, or some of the black people of India. And Muruga represents just the first eye. I call it the first eye, not the third eye. And Muruga represents the first eye, and it's a sphere, a lance that uh, we can project from our first eye to attack negativity, to destroy negative thoughts, to destroy, you know, demons, which are just negative energies in the universe. We can use our first eye to destroy things that are, are thoughts that are hurting us. And so um, that will take us to our third and final combination for this, this uh, phase of healing, which is the um, Petaru, <clears throat> Petaru and Set. And let me see, where are they? Located right now. Okay, so yeah, so Hetaru is still in um, Ophiuchus and Set is still in Sagittarius, but it's about to make a move. What is going on? Lots of fun here. Oh. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Yeah, so um, so anyway, I decided to use um, Hetaru and Set because this combination represents um, balance when you're looking at Mars and Venus. So um, 
So I'm going to be um, putting it out there that I'm going to be coming up with a way to uh, release my feelings and toxic emotions in a way that's loving and beautiful, that's not just angry and um, pointing fingers and accusing people. I want it to be uh, beautiful and sweet. That's what people have said about my music. I have a, um, <clears throat> I have a gift for discussing difficult, complicated topics, but in a beautiful, soft way. So that's my intention right now with this um, this combination of two forks with set and hetero or maruga or even segment that I'm able to utilize my first eye to destroy my negativity, to uh, eliminate this battle with my lower ego. You know, the lower ego is not enough or I'm not good enough or they did this to me or something that runs in my bloodline. I'm never speaking to that person again. Like, that actually happens in my family. <laughs> or if they never speak again for like 40 years. And so, of course, that is a fear that I have that I do not want to manifest. So I need to destroy that, that energy pattern because it's definitely in my system that it's a possibility that it could be happening with my relatives, which I do not, do not want that. So that's what this little um, healing session is about for me personally. And I'm sending it out to all of you on the call and um, those watching the replay. So those are the lower frequency forks. Now I'm doing the higher frequency fork where when you're coming up, you're moving blocks. And when you're coming down, you're manifesting your intentions and desires. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then you can also do this one where you're cutting the cords, like any binds, cords that are still attached to your womb, like from former lovers or abusers or attackers or, you know, any, <clears throat> any entities that might still have a, a hold on you. And you just want to cut it, just break the cord. And then we did um, the sun and Shahuti. I just need to for illumination and communication, for writing, for creating, uh, creating literature and art and music, poetry, Ho'oponopono, anything to illuminate our feelings and give us um, the ease and flow and expressing and you know, that they bring about transformation. Like, my intention is that no matter what the outcome of the election is, that more people wake up to the truth that the election is an illusion. And, you know, my vision is that people stop participating in these, these um, circuses or what, I don't know what they are anymore. That we'll just stop participating and, and it'll just dissolve away. That's, been, that's my vision. That's the vision I've had for a long time. And the youth are in alignment with that. So, And now we have the one for balance. Balancing might and mercy. Balancing strength. Balancing the warrior with the nurturer. Uh, we, I spent a lot of time talking about sex med and Hetheru this summer, about learning how to, um, you know, call on my warrior energy when I needed to and then put her back when I'm done. Like, I have a fear of my, I had a fear of my strength that I would, like, destroy people. And um, I learned also from watching the Muruga movie that with the fear, the fear, um, it, his mother Shakti gave it the ability to, to throw it, to destroy the enemy, but that it will always come back to him. It won't be like, then he's got to go, you know, march all the way over to the mountain to get his spirit back, that it will come, it will return. So I took that as an indication I was on the right track about the Het Hadu, Sekhmet, Het Hadu. And this, uh, this combination of force also represents that ability. So 
I am re removing the block that I had to balancing my um, might and my my uh, beauty path, you know, warrior path and the beauty path. What I thought of this. This is a good session. So anyway, mostly just to uh, be able to express my truth without courage, without fear, and um, have the courage and trust that it's received well, that the people that hear the songs receive the healing. And, uh, you know, if they take it personally, oh, well, <laughs> that's not my problem. <sighs> well, I, you know, I feel, I feel different. I feel, I feel um, more confident about the whole situation. So that's the power of the tuning fork. That's the power of um, identifying blocks and taking action to remove them. There's lots of actions that you can take. You can do journaling. You can dance. You can sing. You can do pendulum work. You can do yoga. Me, I do all of them. <laughs> do all of them. All right, so next I would like to play a little um, blessing with the chime. I'm going to go here. I'm going to get that one back to you. I'm Besides and all the intentions, all the prayers. <sighs> yeah, the universe of families to heal and um, express truth. here. And of course, the um, <clears throat> next section of the evening has to do with what's coming next. And what is coming next is the Kematone Level 1 Certification Retreat coming up January 8th through 16th in Port Antonio. And uh, on Sunday at 3 o'clock Pacific time, I'm not much sure that time is Arizona or Jamaica because you all don't do daylight savings time, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But at 3 o'clock Pacific time on Sunday, November 13th, I will be presenting a webinar on the uh, Kimitone Devotion, and we'll be learning which nectar do correspond to which tuning fork 
and we'll just be learning um, some of their chants. That'll be the first half of the webinar, and then the second half we'll be highlighting the features of the retreat. Uh, the retreat is eight days long, and the first five days are all study. Well, it's one day of traveling. The Sunday is just a day to travel and arrive. And then five days of the week we have the classwork. And then we have two days to spend at a great festival called Love Salute Festival. And this year, Kim and Jones is going to have an actual booth. Last year, our first year, we were just outside of a booth. Someone let us set up outside of a booth. But this year, we're going to have our own booth. And the students will have opportunity to work on clients and, and um, get some of their their um, hours in before you can start practicing professionally. You have to get a certain number of hours in. So, um, so the, uh, I'll be sending out announcements and everything about that tonight and in the morning and throughout the week for people to sign up to learn more about the certification. And even if someone doesn't want to be a sound healer for, say, a professional, you know, with an office and clients and all that, some people just like to take the, take the class because they simply want to learn more about sound healing and about the um, comedic practices. So not everybody that's signing up for the class wants to, you know, be a healer. They just want to learn. So that is also another reason to um, sign up for the class. Um, there's lots of information online about the retreat. I've had the webinars from previous years. They're up on YouTube and at Tachia.com. And if you want more information, you can call me at 707-972-6831. Or you can email me at cosmic at Tachia.com, T-C-H-I-Y-A. Or you can find me on uh, Facebook at the Kimitones page or the Rec App study group page or any number of places online you can find me and I will answer your questions as soon as possible. I think even if you go to my website, Tashia.com, there's a few ways where you can send a direct message to me. So uh, I look forward to the uh, webinar coming up next, well, coming up on Sunday and also the retreat in January. So if you have any questions about that, um, just let me know. Okay. So at this point, I wanted to um, give a shout out, a big do to that website, knowthyself365.com, for all the resources that they have available. And I'm so grateful that they had the the lyrics to the song that I, that, you know, I needed to write or I needed to sing. And also I'm very grateful to Seba Ma and Seba Ja, Dr. Luada Ashby and Dr. Karen Clark Ashby at EgyptianYoga.com. I am initiate, I'm initiate of the Temple of Shatout Netter, the Temple of Aset. And if you're interested in, um, you know, getting some of the devotional chants, like the one I sang today or the ones in the other videos. I have a CD, Blue Lotus Speaks, that's at Bandcamp. You can download it or purchase a hard copy. And um, I'm, I have a lot of the songs up at SoundCloud. I'm getting ready to put together like a sound book, a song book with all the lyrics and the music. I'm working on that. Uh, this new song, I'm, I'm going to put it up on SoundCloud after this presentation. I may put the live recording of the video. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, you know, acknowledge my teachers and that wonderful website, Know Thyself. Oh, I have Know They Self. It's Know Thyself. Know Thyself. At 365.com. Ready? Yeah, know thyself at 365.com. Okay. Yeah. And um, since I have started living with my my life has changed a million percent 
for the better. Um, like, like earlier today, a trigger that happened today, something really meaningless or seemingly meaningless would have really upset me for a long time. And I'm really happy that it only took me a couple hours and that I have a strategy on how to um, fortify myself for when it happens again because the triggers are never going to go away. What's going to happen is how I respond to them. And I know that is from living with my aunt, and I'm able to actually say that. <laughs> All right, then. So the next thing on our agenda is the guided meditation. So I invite each of you to get into a comfortable seated position. Either laying down on the ground, on the floor, or um, in a chair with your back straight, or on the floor uh, in the, with your legs crossed in a lotus posture, what's called a yogi posture. And let's just take a few deep breaths together, inhaling deeply. Allowing your abdominal area to expand. And relax. Allowing your abdominal area to contract. It's almost touching your spine. Again, inhale slowly. Allowing your chest area and your lungs to fill with fresh seconds. Inhaling through the chakras all the way to the crown chakra. And exhale. Expelling all negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And gently close your eyes. Return to normal breathing. And I invite you to visualize yourself seated on a lotus flower. This means that you are located deep within, deep within your consciousness. Deep within your consciousness. And you're just, with every inhalation, a different image comes up. And with every exhalation, you let it go. So I just want you to allow different instances or relationships or experiences that might cause your heart to be heavy. Just come into your mind's eye. And inhale. Just take a look at it. And exhale and let it go. And inhale. Maybe a coworker or a family member. Someone you had an argument with last week and it just wasn't resolved. And let it go. Let's just do that for a few moments. I have several people right now that I need to do some healing. So I'm just calling them up. Like it's calling them up from your heart up to your first eye. Like you're lifting them from your heart to your first eye. And then exhale, you let it go. Now on the next inhalation, I want you to visualize the feather of my eyes, like the one in, on the screen here, the ostrich feather. Beautiful white feather. 
As you're seated on the lotus blossom, representing that you're deep within your consciousness. You take this feather of my eyes and you just gently caressing your face, caressing your shoulders and your heart. And it's just sweeping away all the heaviness, all the sadness, all the bitterness. The sense of longing that things were different. The sense of you wish you could do more. The sense of you're not good enough. Slowly whisking away that feeling that it's all your fault. All this heaviness. Just whisking it away from your heart. And with each gentle caress of the eyes, your heart is getting lighter and lighter. And your spirit is growing stronger and stronger. Every time you gently caress your face, you feel the loving caress of the eyes the balance, the truth, the harmony, the order, the reciprocity, and the righteousness. And just keep brushing yourself until there's, there's no more heaviness. There's no more attachment. There's no disappointment. All you're feeling now is awareness, illumination, understanding, gratitude, and compassion. All that remains is your light being, your light self. You're still seated on that lotus lotus blossom. But all that remains is a light being. You have whisked away all your sense of physical attachments and heaviness and obligation. And all that remains is the light of truth. Now you're taking this feather and you're caressing your throat and your throat chakra. And any chains or blocks that were prohibiting you from speaking your truth are just brushed away. You can see them falling at your feet. There's all these chains and heavy rocks and all kinds of objects that were blocking you from expressing your truth. And now that your heart is as light as a feather, the only sound that comes from your mouth is ma'at. Every word you speak is in alignment with truth. Every thought that you express is not. Because your heart is so light that all you can express is light. You can no longer express darkness. You cannot express lies. You cannot express deception because they're, they're no longer a part of you. You are only light. And now you take this feather of ma'at and you gently caress your first eye. And it's like you're, you're removing centuries of sand and residue that is collected in your first eye. Because you've never done this experience. You've never done this ex- exercise. 
So like when you first wake up in the morning and you still have that crusty sand in your eye, you have to wipe your eyes so that you can see. Well, you're doing the same thing with this feather of my eye, and you're getting away all the crud and the blocks and the toxins that are keeping you from manifesting the truth. And now that you've opened up your first eye and the veil of Maruga, the lamp is ready to defend Ma'at and to eliminate anything that's blocking you from manifesting your vision. You've purified your heart so your heart is as light as a feather. You've purified your throat so you are makaru, you are pure of speech. And now you've purified your first eye and so you are ready for Ma'at. I knew my art action. And so it's just a process. It's the end when we inhale, we're removing toxins, and when we exhale, we are projecting our truth. When we inhale, we're eliminating heaviness from our heart, and when we speak, we're expressing truth. When we inhale, we're moving blocks from our heart and from our throat chakra. And when we exhale, we manifest our truth. So let's just have a few cycles of that. If we inhale, letting go and removing obstacles. And exhale, expressing our truth. Just do this at a few cycles at your own pace. And as you do so, visualize the same people or situations or instances that before were making you feel heaviness. And this time when you look at them, now that your heart has been purified, you see them with the light of ma'at, with the light of truth. And you're able to see them as they truly are. Inhale, remove toxins, exhale, express truth. Inhale, getting rid of negativity, and exhale, letting go of any obstruction to your truth. Turn to normal consciousness. Normal thinking.
Mm-hmm. Know that you can return to this state, peace and tranquility and balance at any time. This might be me. I allow the feather of my heart to purify your heart, purify your speech, purify my, your, your mind and your actions. And you'll be living meditation, living in the earth. I hope you've enjoyed the meditation. You can stay in the meditative space for as long as you can. You can always watch the video again. You want to have the same experience. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you for putting up with the obstacles with getting the recording on. <clears throat> As I said, I had a trigger come up earlier today and I had to deal with it. But I'm so grateful for you being with me here tonight and on this webinar series. Please join me on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, 5 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. I think that will be 6 o'clock Jamaican time. No, seven o- 6 o'clock Jamaican time and 5 o'clock Arizona time. But I have to double check on that. And I will um, post the replay as soon as it is downloaded. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful journey. And I look forward to spending time with you again soon. Attack.